Hey, what's up everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. Today we're going to do a full retro video game emulation demo and review on the B-Link SEI8 Mini PC. This has an i5-8279U processor in it, gives you up to about 4.1 gigahertz and has 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've also got some great graphic capabilities on here. So let's take a closer look at the PC and then we're going to test out some retro video game emulation on here to gauge the performance within Bodicera. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here we have our B-Link SEI8 mini PC with i5-8279U processor, which should get us up to about 4.1 gigahertz. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and this also comes with Intel Iris Plus graphics 655, which supports 4K ultra high definition. So that's great both for our Bodicera emulation today, but also if we're gonna be using the Windows side of things here. So before we connect our SSD with Bodicera, we're going to take a look at what this has externally. So here we have our power button over here on the right hand side, headphone jack right here, our type C connection. We also have two USB three ports in the front. Both sides have great ventilation on the enclosure itself. And then of course, on the backhand side, we have two additional USB three ports, which come in handy for controllers, um, a mouse, keyboard, whatever we want to connect via USB on here. We have our ethernet connection and two HDMI outputs. And then over here we have our DC power supply port. So great design on here. Really, really, really well made. Seems like it would definitely hold up if we were to drop this. I don't see any way that this would be cracking easily or being easily damaged at all. So I'm gonna show you guys how I connect this to my TV. I'll show you all the different connections here before we get started with Inbotisera testing out some retro video game emulation. So first thing we wanna do is I'll pull out the power supply cable, but I'm going to connect that last. I'm going to take my HDMI cable. This is running actually today through my capture card, but goes to the um, monitor that I'll be using or TV. I'm going to simply connect that to the first HDMI output there. I'm also going to grab a wired controller because I'm working in a pretty small space today. So here is a PlayStation style controller. I'm going to actually connect this right in the front here. So I'll go with this connection right here, the second one. First one's going to be my SSD enclosure. So we're going to connect that next. All right, so here is my external SSD enclosure connects right here through the USB 3 connection. So it'll be right here in the front, just like that. And we'll be able to boot up right from this Bodicera build that's on this SSD by simply connecting a keyboard. And then on that keyboard, we're going to hit our function seven button repeatedly. And that's where we'll be able to change our boot order. By default, this is going to boot up into Windows, but all we have to do is simply hit F7 repeatedly. It's going to bring us up to a screen where we can adjust that boot order. And as long as you have this connected, it's going to register this as the second option that you can boot to. So simply select that and you are ready to go. I've already gone ahead and set that up so I don't have to go ahead and um, you know, make that change anymore. So we're gonna go and connect our power supply. I'll first connect that to the outlet and then that will connect right back here and we are good to go. Now you'll notice that it gets power, but you do need to hit the power button right here in order to actually start the boot up process, which is nice. Some PCs, as soon as you have power going to them, they automatically boot up. That's not the case here, which is great. We go ahead and we just hit our power button like so.
triple. <laughs> Round one. Fight. Love. <laughs> All right, guys, you saw firsthand exactly what this PC has to offer and what the performance is like on here through Botticera running a bunch of different games and game collections. So we jumped into N64. No issues there at all. Everything was smooth sailing. We jumped into Mario Kart 64, probably the most uh, popular game within that collection. That's why I chose to go in there. Uh, I'm also really familiar with what the uh, experience is supposed to be like on that particular game, more so than other titles. So no issues there, really smooth. Um, PlayStation 2, that's a collection that usually you can get running on, I'd say mid-level PCs, but you have to sacrifice certain things. You have to go into your settings, really tweak the emulator uh, and the emulation settings, of course, to get that running fairly well. This, right out of the gate, I didn't go into any settings whatsoever. I didn't adjust frame rates. Um, I didn't customize the emulator in any way, shape, or form. I simply just picked games, dove into them, and right out of the gate, everything was smooth and perfect. So no lags, delays, audio cutouts, nothing like that within PS2. So that's a great indication that this is a powerful PC with some great performance. Now we also jumped into Xbox. Xbox doesn't have a massive collection of games that are running particularly well currently on Botticera. Um, the emulator, just in my opinion, is a little bit lacking there. But the games that I did test on here, and I did test more games than I've shown in this video, I don't want to make this video 40 minutes long, so I really limit what I include in the video. But Xbox emulation performed really well on this PC as well. So Thumbs up there. GameCube, no issues whatsoever. Perfect on GameCube, perfect on Wii. Now, Wii U, we ran into some issues. Now, the game functioned properly, but we definitely had some missing graphics there while the emulator was compiling. Now, the compiling process didn't take long at all, and in the end, we ended up with what I would say is the full experience of that game. Um, no lags or delays there or anything like that. Seemed to be a good experience in the end, but the um, journey getting there definitely had some bumps in the road. Now, unfortunately, that same experience isn't the case for other Wii U games. I would say that about 90% of the games for the Wii U collection that I have on my build right now for Botticera did not work on this PC. A lot of them didn't load in or a lot of them loaded in and we saw 
significant screen tearing that was just absolutely um, awful. There was no way to get around it, no way to play any of the games that I tried to jump into. So there are some that work. They're usually going to be the more basic games. And unfortunately, with that being said, they're probably not the games that the majority of people want to dive into for Wii U. So definitely want to consider what collections you want access to if you're considering getting this PC. And what I want to say and be totally clear on is if you're considering this or a gaming PC, this is definitely going to be the more budget friendly option, but you're going to lose performance there. So it's not to be compared with a gaming PC. A gaming PC is almost always, of course, depending on what model and brand you go with, but almost always going to exceed the capabilities of a mini PC in general. And I'm gonna do a video kind of addressing mini PCs versus gaming PCs because I think there's a lot of confusion there. But for what it can handle, it is a really great PC. And of course, the size of this is really impressive. Love how compact this is. I have a gaming PC here. It's massive. It's probably, I would say probably 30 times the size of this. So if you're working in a small area and you don't want a massive tower or, um, I mean the average PC to take up a lot of space, then this is definitely a great option. And this currently on Amazon is going for just over 400 bucks or so. I wouldn't say that that's cheap, but I think that it's a fair price for what you get out of this and you have the ability to boot up into Windows 10 or 11 depending on what version you get of this um, so you could use this as a regular PC and when you want to go into gaming simply connect a external SSD enclosure like I did here in this video today to the USB port um, on the front or the back and be able to boot up into Bodicera by simply changing the boot order. If you do decide to do that, just know that you'll need to connect a keyboard to your PC and you'll just tap that F7 for this particular PC. It's F7, some, um, so it's function seven, but um, some PCs are F2, F4, I've seen F9 and F10, or again, F7, which is actually one of the more uncommon ones in my experience anyways. So F7, if you want to switch your boot order and be able to use this both in Windows as well as Botticera or whatever emulation platform you want to use it in. So that's going to do it for today though. In the end, really a high quality product here, made extremely well and um, definitely packs a punch for retro video game emulation, but it's definitely not the uh, top of the line in terms of PC options for retro gaming. It just depends again on what collections you want access to and what you want to incorporate into your build. So that's gonna do it for today. If you guys want more information on this PC, drop down to the description of this video and I'll put some direct links in there so you can click over and get additional information. If you enjoyed the video today and you found this information helpful, you guys know the drill. Smash the thumbs up button on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. That's gonna do it though. Thanks for the support. I'll see you on the next video.